Hey guys, TCG Lover here. Um, I'm going to do a deck profile of my uh, TG Gadgets. Um, I decided that TG Gadgets is overall a more consistent deck and compared to Machine Gadgets, which is what I normally play. Um, I think it's just better in the sense of that you get more options with it and um, actually against um, decks that come around these days like Agents and other things. Um, this deck just really, really does kick them in the nut, in the nuts pretty badly. Um, it's not like anti agents or anti dark worlds, but it's um, stun in a way. You know, it's got high, it's got ten traps in it, I believe. But yeah, anyway, let's get going on it. Um, so yeah, TG gadgets. So we're gonna have uh, six gadgets. I do like my hobbies. It's good. Oh yeah, if you're in Brighton and you have uh, reds. And yellows of hobbies, because I don't really want to get them online, because I've been from America. Um, if you do have them, then yeah, I'm, I will probably want them from you. So, yeah. Red gadgets, yellow, so cool. Okay, now this is one thing that I had. If you look at my previous video, um, I was supposed to get strikers in the mail, but they didn't come. And um, uh, it said in the thing that they will deliver it in a separate post. So, I am waiting on that. So, I've got uh, three strikers here. This is a striker, even though it's the back of a Yu-Gi-Oh card, but it's actually striker. So yeah, three strikers, uh, three warwolves, and two rhinos. The reason why I'm running two rather than three is because it's level four, which is important. And um, if I need the muscle of rhino, a rhino attack, brr, if I need that, um, I can search for it when I want to. It's not like I need to draw into it, draw into a beta. I don't. I don't care about that. It's not the point of the deck. The point of the deck is to recycle, not recycle, but float. All of your cards to float, and this card is one of the only few cards that doesn't work with creature swap very well. I mean, you can, but you'd rather get something like striker or something instead, and then use this for when you need to attack directly. Because two thousand, you know, a quarter of their life, would do it a few times, and they just lose like a lot. So, yeah, and it kind of baits up warnings because of that. Um. And also, the fact is, I like this deck is because uh, I can go into Striker, then Warwolf, especially on Warwolf, and especially and summon a gadget from my hand, then go into Trish, and it only cost me basically two cards, so, which is pretty good. I like doing that, and yeah, lots of different uh, exceed options as well. Uh, we've got two Veilers. Um, I always run two Veiler. I love it. Um, if I had Max C, I'd be running it in this deck, but I don't have it on me because I sold mine. Very clever of me. I sold them very cheaply as well, which is bad because they just shot up to like forty pounds. Um, and gauze, um, gauze is because uh, this deck is low on. It's got low monster count, firstly, um, but it's got a high. It's got a high trap count. But the um, the fact is, is that sometimes uh, you know you're not going to be setting five traps. This is stupid. So uh, this card is great for like just turning the game around, especially it works with cards like Vela, so you can make like Stardust Dragon. Um, anyway, traps. We've got the staples. We've got Mind Control, very good in this deck because of Striker, and because of the, the fact that we've got War Wolves. We've got basically two, level 2, level 3, level 4, so we can always exceed with their monsters. Um, Pot of Avarice, because you float every card, nearly, nearly every card in this deck floats, so you want to recycle. Free MST, I love Free MST, I'm loving it, really am, it's really good. Um... I like the way that it works compared to Heavy Storm. I'm, I'm siding Heavy Storm now. Um, but I like the way that this card works. It works better than Heavy Storm because people don't set more than two cards. And I'd rather just MST one, in all honesty. Because if I MST their MST, which happens, um, I know that their other face down isn't going to be an MST unless they set two, which is pretty stupid. No, it's not stupid, but it's... I don't know. Because if you if you heavy storm their two MSTs and they basically got no removal left in their deck anyway, and they got so three pots of of consistency, um, great in this deck. You're running gadgets, so there's no reason not to. You can get this card, which is the creature swaps. I was running two, but now I'm running three, because it basically turns the deck into a troll deck, um, but a good troll deck, an actual comp competitive troll deck, um, especially cards like uh, oh Vela, it's at the bottom. Yeah, Vela. If you if they have Christian on the field or something, Artful Christian or Hyperion or uh, Graffa, you can just creature swap with your Vet Vela and Ram over their card. 
really ridiculous play. I've done it before, and my opponent was like, whoa, too late to the face, oh god. Um, I ran book because, I don't know, I'm just sort of like iffy on it. I don't mind book, I mean, it's just like people don't synchro as much these days. They do synchro, it's just, yeah. I've run so many traps, and I might take it out, but I don't know what to take it out for. I mean, if I had Maxi, I'd take this out for it, but yeah. Um, deep prisons, we've got two of those because it's good. Uh, stops so many, stops Graffa and stops Christia. Bottomless, we've got one because of rabbits, uh, and the fact is, is that I like to have the extra cards just to kill stuff, aside from two warnings. Uh, Sun Judgment negates everything, wins games on its own. Mirror Force, Torrential because you're running TGs, so you can blow up your card and basically wait until they summon like two or three cards, blow up the whole field and you get to search and they've lost loads of cards, so really good. Dust Shoot and Compulsory. I'll talk about Compulsory. Compulsory is so good. Such a good card. It's ridiculous. It's like so versatile in this format. You know, you can use it to basically if you're low on monsters, right, and you know that if you if your monster dies right now, you're gonna be in some serious shit. Right? This card basically allows you to put it back in your hand for another use. Basically, since this whole deck is full of floaters, if you return one of your cards to your hand, it's not the bad it's not a bad thing, right? If you're if you have gores on your field and you've only got and you've got no back row, basically the gores is the last card in your hand or something, you can bounce this card back to your Bounce, bounce, uh, bounce gores back to your hand, and if they try attack again directly, then you can just drop it again. Basically, it stops, it dodges good cards. Yeah, uh, especially stuff like mind control as well. You can chain that. Oh my god, really good. Definitely one of the best cards in the deck. I don't know why people don't run like two or three. I mean, three's overkill, but two is pretty good. But I only run one right now because of the fact that I haven't actually tested two. Yet, I've only just recently made this deck, and um, but I'm loving it anyway. It's really good. So yeah, um, I think you guys know my extra deck. I'd rather not go into it because I want to keep that a secret for the for YCS Brighton. If you guys are going, um, you know, it's good to have a secret. And I can't show my side deck either. But yeah, that's basically the the uh, the deck. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Oh yeah, by the way, you can't really make this deck unless you have Trishula. Um, I'm just saying it makes the deck so much more viable if you have that out. If Chachula, basically, Chachula is such a good card, it hits so much. So, um, you definitely need to have a Chachula to make this deck. Or Mr. Worm, but Mr. Worm isn't really that great. Um, so yeah, anyway, thanks for watching guys. Teach you love it.